25, the solubility product of CaSO4-2H2O is 2.4 times 10 to the negative 5. What mass of this salt will dissolve in 1.0 liters of a 0.010 molar uh, SO4 2 minus concentration? Okay. So they gave us a couple of things here, right? They're telling us that the solubility product of calcium sulfate dihydrate, which is CaSO4 2H2O, is 2.4 times 10 to the negative 5. Remember, the solubility product is the KSP. So they told us that the KSP for this equation we have to use is 2.4 times 10 to the negative 5. But remember, anytime that we're working with the KSP, we have to have a balanced equation. Now, remember, with hydrates, we only take into consideration the, orga uh, the ionic compound because H2O is going to act as a liquid when it breaks off. And liquids don't get included in the KSP or any K value. So we're just going to dissociate the calcium sulfate. So we have CaSO4, that's a solid. This uh, dissociates, double arrow, right, into its two components. The split is between the calcium and the sulfate, the SO4. So I have Ca plus SO4. Now we need to find out the charges, but you could look at the periodic table to help you out, right? Calcium is in group two, so that's always a two plus charge. And then sulfate is always a two minus charge. Since these have uh, charges, they're going to be aqueous. And I'm looking at this compound and the balanced equation and it's balanced already. So I'm just gonna throw this off to the side for now. Okay. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my general formula for the KSP and just write the formula for us, right? KSP always just equals the concentration of the products raised to their coefficients. No solids allowed, therefore the reactants aren't in there. So in this case, KSP would be equal to concentration of Ca2 plus times the concentration of SO4, two minus. Uh, they both can be raised to the first because they both have uh, no coefficients in the front. That means that there's just one of each. So I can raise these to the first, but that's the same as if I'm not writing anything. And now let's just see what we can plug in here. The KSP value they told us was 2.4, that uh, 2.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. But now I don't really know what the concentrations of these are. So I'm gonna go back to my balanced equation and see if I could work it out. I have to use variables. But I notice that it says that it's going to dissolve in a one liter of 0 0.010 molarity of SO4 two minus. So it seems like I, or, you know, I already have a SO4 two minus concentration. The original SO4 two minus concentration is the 0 0.010 molarity. And this is initial, right? It's being, this compound, this hydrate is being dissolved in the sulfate ion. So if you, are, if you notice that you're dealing with common ions and you have initial concentrations, we have to have an ice table here. So let's ice it out. That's pretty good. I, C, E. I know I'm off a little bit to the side here, but I think we're good. There we go. The reactant column, no one cares because it's a solid. So don't worry about that. And now they're saying originally that we're starting off with the sulfate ion of 0 0.010. It's already in molarity, capital M. So I don't have to do anything with the liters. Remember, this chart is only for molarity. I didn't start off with any calcium, so zero. Now I'm gonna change, right? I'm gonna plus X and use your coefficients, but for both of them, it would just be plus one X, but that's the same as just saying plus X. And then combine them for equilibrium. So zero plus X is just X. And then 
0.010 plus x is 0.010 plus x. These are your new equilibrium values that you're going to plug into your KSP equation. So calcium is just x, and the sulfate is 0.010 plus x. Now, we always like to assume here, just to see if we can get, you know, away with not doing the quadratic equation. What we're going to assume is that since this KSP is roughly on the low end, right, 10 to the negative fifth, whatever we started with for the sulfate is probably going to be roughly the same number at equilibrium, which means that this addition is probably so small that you're probably not even going to see it. So in that case, I'm going to assume that at the end of the day, it's roughly going to be this number, and I can get rid of the plus x. Let's solve for x and see if we could get away with it. So 2.4 times 10 to the negative fifth equals, we have x times 0 0.010. We want to solve for x, so divide by 0 0.010. Did I do that right? 0 0.010. And now we get x equals. So let's see. 2.4 times 10 to the negative fifth divided by 0 0.01. I get 2.4 times 10 to the negative 3. Now let's just see. Does it match the 5% rule? Or does it pass the 5% rule? How we check is we take that number that we just found and we divide it by the initial. So it's like part over whole. It's part over whole, but then we have to turn it into a percent, so that's why we times it by 100. And if this math is 5 or less, we are good. But if it's greater than 5, we have to go back and we have to keep that plus x in there. So let's see. This answer divided by 0 0.01 times 100. Oh boy. I got 24%. Since this number is way higher than 5, we do not pass the 5% rule, and therefore we have to go back. So I'm going to erase all this, unfortunately. And I'll only erase a little bit of this, because what we have to do is we just have to include that plus x. So I'm just going to scooch this out and say that I have to keep that in here. Now let's do the math. Well, now I have to distribute. So it'd be 2.4 times 10 to the negative fifth equals 0 0.010x plus x times x is x squared. And here's that issue, right? I have an x value and an x squared value. There's the start of the quadratic. So I have to move all the numbers over to one side. So what I can do is I can just minus 2.4 times 10 to the negative fifth on both sides. And I'm going to rearrange this side to get it into that uh, x squared x and the number. So I'm going to say that the x squared comes first, then comes the x value, it's a positive, 0 0.010x, and then minus 2.4 2.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. And this all equals zero. Now from here, and maybe what I'll do, is I'll just move this over here. Because now from here we have to get our a, b, and c value. So the a value, remember, is the number that's in front of the x squared. And since there was no number here, it's a one. The b value is the number that's in front of the x value. Take into consideration what, what uh, charge it is. So the b value is a positive 0 0.010. And then the c value is just the number that's just by itself. So in this case, I'll say that c is a negative 2.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now here comes the fun part, the quadratic equation, which is this right here. Negative b plus or minus the square root 
of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Yeehaw. <laughs> so let's just plug in our a, b's, and c's into this equation. Maybe I'll try to do it on this side. So we have x equals negative b. The b was 0 0.010 uh, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So let's see. b again is 0 0.010, and that's now squared. Minus 4 times a, which is the 1, times c, which is the negative 2.4. And we probably are going to have to sc scooch this over a little bit. Let's see. Negative 2.4 times 10. I can maybe get scooch this over a little bit. I got room. I got plenty of room. There we go. Times 10 to the negative fifth. That's all square rooted. And this is all over uh, 2 times a. So it'd be 2 times 1. Okay, so let's start simplifying. 2 times 1 is just 2, right? So get rid of that. And now what we can do is we can do this all under the a radical in one shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 0 0.01 squared and then minus the 4 times 1 times negative 2.4 times 10 to the negative fifth and get one answer. So let's see. Uh, okay, 0 0.01 squared. And then that would be plus that value because a negative times a negative is a positive. So I'm just going to get rid of all this. And my new value is 1.96 times 10 to the negative fourth. Let's now take the square root of that. Okay, we're getting closer. So that is now 0 0.014. And this is still over all of 2, two right? So now, there's two options here. We could either take the negative 0 0.01 and add it to the 0 0.014, or we could take a negative and subtract 0 0.014. We only, basically only one answer is the correct answer. Keep in mind that concentration values can never be negative. So I have to pick the right one in which it is a positive number. Which one, the negative or the positive, would give me a positive? Yeah, it's the positive one. So I'm going to just get rid of the negative. Now I'm just going to add these together. So this, okay, so I get 0 0.004. So we're getting somewhere. 0 0.004, and then all divided by 2. 0 0.002, right? Maybe I'll just put this over here, and then I'll say x equals 0 0.002, and that's now the molarity. Okay, but now the thing is, is that they want the mass of the salt. If they want the mass, it has to be in grams. So I just have to go from a molarity somehow to a mass. Well, remember what the molarity formula is, right? Molarity equals moles divided by liters. We know that, that the molarity is the 0 0.002, and they did tell me that I had one liter. But if I just, you know, cross multiply this to get the moles, basically we have these two values to find the mole. Anything times one is itself. So if it's one liter, it's going to be the same molarity. So... Now I have, maybe I'll just put that over in the corner. Now I have the same amount of moles, and I'm just going to put them over here. So there's 0 0.002 moles. And you can use this as a uh, conversion, right, or just look at the ratios. When they're asking for the mass of the salt, they really want 
the mass of the original compound, the CaSO4.2 H2O. But use those ratios. There was no value in the front of the CaSO4. That means that there was only one of them. So you can treat this as a 1x value. You could say that this was the amount of the moles of the CaSO4. And then we could even go further by saying, out of all of the CaSO4-2H2O, how many CaSO4s were there? There was only one. So for every one whole hydrate, there was only one CaSO4. So it's a one to one. That means that the moles are the same as well. So now I could just extend on the whole hydrate. Okay. Now I have the moles of the hydrate, aka the salt. Now I just have to convert to grams. So how do I go from moles to grams of the CaSO4 to H2O? Maybe I'll just pull this a little bit more. Well, moles to grams, all you have to do is just times by the molar mass. So I just have to go on the periodic table and find out what that molar mass is. I have to include the, the dihydrate. So let's see. CaSO4. Um, I have 40.08 plus 1 sulfur. So 32.06. I have 4 oxygen, so 4 times 16. I have 4 hydrogen. And then I have 2 more oxygen. So I'm just going to multiply it by 172.172. And then there you go. We will get the mass. 0 0.002 times 172.172. And I, I guess I'll, I'll put it for two sig figs. So I get 0 0.34 grams of that salt. And that is the answer. That is the answer with doing the quadratic, because unfortunately the 5% rule didn't work. <laughs> but that might happen on your test or quiz. I don't know, but it's always good to know. All right? I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. If you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button and tell your friends. Tell your classmates about this cool YouTube channel. I think it's pretty cool. You guys have been so kind in the comments, and I'm really glad that we're helping you out. So let's keep rocking and rolling. All right? I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.